Hello everybody, Thomas here, your host as always. Welcome back to SFF 180 and Mailbag Monday for July the 10th. Small mailbag today, we only got five packages last week. Not much, but not any more really than I was expecting because remember, holiday week last week, 4th of July and all that. I was expecting it to be a little bit slow as people came back into work and resumed the week. Uh, but what it does give me time for is a new announcement. I'm starting a new series on the channel beginning August the 1st. The SFF180.com wrap-ups will appear on the first of every month. And essentially what this is all about is some of you know, right, that I had a website before I did all this book deeming stuff. And I had it for years and years and I put hundreds and hundreds of reviews on it. And uh, I recently, last year, uh, on the 15th anniversary, 15th, 15th of that website, I relaunched it as sff180.com, after which I was immediately a slacker about keeping it updated, porting the old content over from the original site sfreviews.net to sff180.com. I think the last time I, this is shameful, last time I updated the homepage was maybe January. Yeah, I suck. Uh, but I've decided no more, no more of that, not gonna slack anymore. And what I'm gonna do uh, starting the 1st of August, like I said, and every month thereafter, is give you a website wrap-up video. Essentially, it'll be a progress report as to here is what I've done with the site this month. It'll be, you know, I, I finished uh, this certain list of menus, I, I, I brought over these reviews, I added these new reviews, fixed navigation, I did. I'm just gonna be letting you guys know what the progress is uh, up until I have the, the whole thing, finally. And it takes a lot of time because I'm doing this the old fashioned way. I've got a, you know, I've got Dreamweaver. I have my own hosting service. I'm not using an existing blogging service. Why am I not doing that? Even though it might be easier, less time intensive because those platforms are historically really unstable, right? I mean, how many blogging services have you seen come and go in the last decade? You know, it's like, they're even saying that the future of Tumblr is in doubt, right? I mean, so what's the point of just putting all of this stuff up on some kind of existing, blog network thing, and then one day I wake up, poof, they're gone, they're out of business, all that work. No, no, no. So I keep it all like my own thing. And what that means is it's more time intensive, but it's all preserved and presented in exactly the way I want it. Because I want people to use the site as a legitimate companion to this channel. I want to, you guys to think of it as this sort of organic presence that I have, uh, you know, unified and everything on the web. There are lots of reviews, lots, lots, on the website that aren't here on the channel and that will not appear here on the channel. Uh, so anyway, that's the announcement. Okay, I think I've yammered on about that long enough. Let's get into these books, shall we? Okay, this first one is from Harper Collins, Harper Voyager, and it looks like a pretty Harper intensive week this week. And this is very nice to see. This is the finished copy and trade paperback of Numenon. This is a space opera debut. The author is Marina J. Lostetter. Comes out August the 1st. I've already got this as an arc, and I have uh, sort of put it into my queue. Anyway, it says, in 2088, Earth is ready to explore the stars beyond our solar system. The only question is, where to go? Astrophysicist Reggie Strafer has an idea, an anomalous star that appears to defy physics. Weird natural phenomenon or something dot 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 manufactured. The journey will take generations, but asking the world's best and brightest to leave behind everything they've known and loved proves to be too much. And so Convoy 7 will be populated by men and women raised on Earth, trained in specific tasks to ensure a perfect harmony that needs to last centuries. And so that brilliance isn't lost, their genetic history will be cloned. Meaning, the original members of the convoy will be born again and again so they're able to discover what lies beyond the limits of human knowledge. Okay? With the help of an ageless AI, they may just do that if they can survive the journey and each other. Okay. Um, all right, well then, generation ship tale, in, after a fashion, right? Not, no, not, it's a cloned crew, as in six wakes, but functioning in a manner similar to a generation ship, because each generation of clones is building upon the next, I guess. Okay, August the 1st, from Harper Voyager, Numenon, by Marina J. Lostetter. Let me know in the comments. 
and a HarperCollins box. So maybe a hardcover of some kind? Well, this is very pretty and very nice to have, and I thank you so much for packaging it in that sturdy box, Harper. I wish other publishers would do that so that these books aren't beat half to death by the mail service time they get here. All right, this is uh, The Reluctant Queen. It's the sequel to The Queen of Blood. Let's see, it comes out on... Oh, it's already out. Came out on the 4th of July. There we are. Uh, and the second volume in a series called The Queens of Renthea. Queen of Blood is one that I have been wanting to get into. You know how it is with a massive TBR. Uh, but now The uh, Reluctant Queen is out. And it says, let's see, this epic fantasy series, uh, it raked in starred reviews, praise from iconic authors, and an ALA Alex Award. The Queen of Blood left readers deeply enamored of the sprawling woodland world of Renthea, inhabited by malicious spirits and humans alike. But it also left many emotionally wrecked. Oh dear. Okay, one of those. All right then, uh, The Reluctant Queen, now out. The sequel to The Queen of Blood by Sarah Beth Durst. Let me know if you want me to dive into this series. And this next one is not from Harper. It's from Orbit. It's called You Die When You Die which strikes me as incredibly practical life advice. Uh, the author is Angus Watson. Uh, this is the first in a new series. And as you might have expected from the title, it's grimdark fantasy. Surprise. And I believe, again, it's got one of these back cover blurbs that is more like a tagline, but not an actual like synopsis of the plot. But I have given it a little flip through, and it appears to be inspired by or based upon the early Viking arrival in the Americas, right, which took place in, you know, the 10th or 11th century, hundreds of years before Columbus showed up and, you know, gave everybody syphilis and did whatever he did. Uh, but this is, I think, already on the stands. I think it's already on sale from Orbit. But Angus Watson's You Die When You Die, and not a minute before, because that would be like some weird timey-wimey stuff. But out now from Orbit Books. Let me know in the comments. And what's this one? Oh, this one is from Pyre. It's from Prometheus Books. Let's see what we got. And this is the finished copy of A Kiss Before Doomsday. It's, uh, it's by Lawrence McNaughton, and it appears to be it's a witty urban fantasy, uh, the, the Drew Jasper series, evidently. I think I've already gotten this in, uh, as an arc, I believe. And then the first one was called It Happened One Doomsday, right? And anyway, it says, peppy urban fantasy, as described by Kirkus Reviews, comedy, fantasy, and romance blend together smoothly. Okay. It seems as if Drew, proprietor of the Crystal Connection and newly minted sorceress, has only just averted one apocalypse when another comes along. Undead creatures have appeared on the streets of Denver, attacking sorcerers who are acting even more strangely than usual. Signs point to forbidden necromancy in the hands of someone trying to fulfill the prophecy of the apocalypse scroll. Okay, so you get it. It's that kind of thing. And this one is out uh, tomorrow on the 11th, okay, from uh, Prometheus Books in trade paperback. Sequel to It Happened One Doomsday, A Kiss Before Doomsday. And finally, finally, we have the very last package from HarperCollins. Now, this is one I'm pretty pleased to see. Uh, it's an arc for Sea of Rust. The author is C. Robert Cargill name that might be familiar to you. He has not only written a few other fantasy novels, but he is a screenwriter. He co-wrote Doctor Strange. Okay. And this is a compelling robot fable. For, fable? Fable? What's a fable? For the Rising Millennia. Comes out September the 5th. Described as a new post-apocalyptic robot western. Okay, cool. Robots have destroyed humanity across the decimated terrain of the American heartland. Freebots the lone independent survivors of the ongoing revolution, Rome. Those brave few have not assimilated into One World Intelligence, OWI, massive artificially intelligent mainframes with intellects and capabilities far above that of single robots. Sea of Rust brilliantly chronicles the tale of Brittle, one scavenger robot wandering in the wasteland who must come to terms with the atrocities of the past. The dire reality of the present uh, all while struggling against an ever-evolving intelligent technology that advances relentlessly toward universal domination. Hmm. Been 30 years since the apocalypse and 15 years since the murder of the last human being at the hands of robots. Humankind is extinct. Every man, woman, and child has been liquidated by a global uprising devised by the very machines humans designed and built to serve them. Let that be a warning to you. Your little automated checkout machine that you're using at Walmart? You think it's benign. 
but it's judging you. Uh, most of the world is controlled by an OWI, but not all robots are willing to cede their individuality, their personality, for the sake of a greater, stronger, higher power. Right, resist the Borg. These intrepid res resistors are outcasts, solo machines wandering among various underground outposts who have formed an, into an unruly civilization of rogue AIs in the wasteland that was once our world. All right, and so it goes from there. Sea of Rust. All right, rebellious robots against the evil AI overlord, sounds like. On sale September the 5th. So let me know in the comments. And that's all I got this week for the mailbag. You know the drill. Light up those comments. Let me know which of these looks most interesting and exciting to you, which you would like to see me prioritize for review. If you missed last week's mailbag and the review that appeared last week, go check those out as well. I know a lot of you are probably busy with family and vacation stuff. Anyway, if you enjoyed watching, please leave a like, share the video far and wide with everybody, and above all, please subscribe if you have not done so. That's how SFF 180 grows. Also, you can support the channel at its Tee Public store and at my Patreon, where recruits into Wink's army get to watch these videos a day early and cool little perks like that. All right, and for all the rest of you, thank you all so much for being viewers. I couldn't do it without you. And until I see you next time, happy reading.